Zainab alayhi salam's principles are principles which are to be observed by the males and the females of the community. MashaAllah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyyal azim. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد والعنة الدائمة الباقية على أعدائهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد Elders of the community, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman Assalamu alaikum jami'a wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In the period of the imamate of our fourth imam, the task in front of imam was a very difficult task. After the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, there had been a great change in the Muslim ummah. People were afraid. People were afraid because they thought that if Yazid can kill the grandson of the Holy Prophet, then who are we? There was great fear. People had turned away from the true teachings of Islam. Like Imam Ali al-Islam had said in the year 40 AH, that nothing of Islam remains except its name, and nothing of the religion remains except its customs. People used to pray five times a day. People used to go and perform Hajj. People would fast in the holy month of Ramadan. But this was all which they were into. What was the true Islam, the teachings of Islam, those that related to their lives, where there was matter of justice, where there was matter of dignity, where there was matter of honor, they were not worried about that. They were more worried about their own life. Remember, the teaching of Islam, there's a beautiful teaching of Islam, and this beautiful teaching of Islam has been demonstrated by the Holy Prophet and the A'imma Tahirin alayhim salam and that teaching is what is called in Arabic as Al-Ithar, in English is selflessness. The Muslim un Ummah had become selfish and not practicing selflessness. This is how the community had totally changed. So the task in front of Imam was a very big task, and uh, Imam also knew that in order to achieve his objectives, uh, the path in front of him is a very difficult path. Just as a reminder, the three important tasks in front of Imam was number one, 
to bring the people back to original Islam. Number two was to establish in the hearts of the people the importance of imama, imama being the divine appointment. Imama does not mean the appointment by the people, the divine appointment to place it into their hearts, to make them believe into this. And number three was to bring those Shias who were individuals, bring them into unit, establish an organization by which the Shias would work together and the Shias would move together in this task. Yesterday I mentioned that in order to fulfill this task, Imam used the devotional way and that is number one by Hajj, number two by the attendance in the Friday prayers, and number three that insistence upon the recitation of the salawat. Recite salawat, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa If we look at Banu Umayyah, Banu Umayyah's target was that people would forget Islam, people would forget Ahlul Bayt Salam. Imam's task was to keep the remembrance of the Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet alive in the minds of the people. We move forward today and we see how Imam was able or what tactics did he use in order to achieve these objectives. And we come to what I mentioned yesterday, keeping alive the event of Ashura. How did it start? Please keep this in mind that Imam السلام, had suffered a lot. It is not easy for a person. Age of Imam was 23. At that age, the responsibility of Imamat. At that age, he is taken as a captive from Karbala to Kufa, from Kufa to Damascus. At that age, he has witnessed the massacre that has taken place on the plains of Karbala, where his family members have been killed. At that age, he also sees how the captives have been, are being taken and how they are being treated. And not only that, that which Yazid wanted to display in front of the people, and that was his victory by keeping the heads of Shohada on lances, on spears, and parading them from one place to another place. Historians have mentioned that in order to reach Damascus, there were two routes from Kufa. Purposefully, the longer route was taken. So many villages were covered, and at the same time, the Ahlul Bayt السلام, had to suffer a lot. In all these sufferings, this is how Imam Ali Zainul Abidin al Islam keeps Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Keeps alive the event of Ashur. He got opportunity in Kufa, he delivered a sermon there. He got opportunity in the bazaar of Kufa, he delivered a sermon there. Wherever he got opportunity, he did talk to the people and explain to them about who they were and what happened to them. But now they are present in the palace of Yazid. There are, as people have said, historians have written, 700 other people present there. There are ambassadors present there. There are others, uh, people, other people who are of uh, importance who are present there. 
And Imam Ali Zainullah Abidin al-Islam and other captives are standing there as captives and in front of them is the head of Imam Hussein a.s. Please bring this into imagination, try and understand. And Yazid's spokesman stands up and delivers a sermon where he praises Yazid, Muawiyah and everyone and then he speaks ill of the Ahlul Bayt, of the Holy Prophet. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin al-Islam is captive, keep this in mind. And Imam Ali Zainul Abidin tells Yazid, Yazid, allow me to climb on this pieces of wood, which is of course what we call as member. But Imam could not give that member the sacredness and the sanctity of the member of the Holy Prophet. So he said, those pieces of wood, let me climb on that and please allow me to speak something. Yazid said, no. Those who were near him, they said, Yazid, why do you want to stop this person? He is such in, in such a weak state and he, is, he has been humiliated. What will he speak? Allow him. Yazid was refusing. And when there was a lot of insistence, Yazid allowed. And when Imam came on the member, see the first thing he said, this is the boldness, the courage of Imam. What did Imam say? He immediately turned towards that spokesman of Yazid and told him, وَيْلَكَ أَيُّهَا الْخَاطِبَ Woe upon you, O Khatib, O the one who has just delivered a speech, اِشْتَرَيْتَ رِضَ الْمَخْلُوقِ بِسَخَطِ الْخَالِقِ You have bought, اِشْتَرَيْتَ, you have bought the pleasure of makhluk, meaning a created one, which is Yazid, but in return you have uh, accumulated for you the wrath of the Khalik, the wrath of the Creator that is Allah Azza wa Jal. And after that Imam tells him, فَتَبَوَّأَ مَقْعَدَكَ فِي النَّارِ Prepare for yourself a place in the fire of hell. Before he starts anything, before he begins the thana of Allah, the praise of Allah, the praise of the Prophet, before he does anything, first attacking that person, giving an indication to those people that number one, whatever he has said is wrong, and number two is that I, Ali Zainul Abidin salam, is not going to step behind for, for, from speaking the truth. I will tell you what is the truth. Now Imam, when after praising Allah, sending salawat on the Prophet and saying everything, Imam now begins his khutbah and see how he begins the khutbah. He says, Utina sittan wa fuddilna bisaba. We have been given six merits and we have been raised or our status is raised because of seven excellences. Imam then says, Utina al ilm wal hilm wal samaha wal fasaha wal shuja'a wal mahabbata fi qulubil mu'mineen. Six things that we have been given is ilm, knowledge, hilm that is 
patience, perseverance, was samahata, and we have been given that the position of dignity, wal fasahata, and we have been given eloquence, was shujaata, and we have been given bravery, and finally Imam says, wal mahabbata fi qulubil mu'minin, and the love of our love in the hearts of mu'minin, of the believers. To my younger brothers and sisters, the mahabba of Ahlul Bayt, which is in our hearts, is a matter of pride for us. It is not a matter of burden for us, it is a matter of pride for us. We salute our parents, we salute our forefathers. We salute the elders of the community who have persevered in order to ensure that this law of Ahlul Bayt is passed from generation to generation. And then Imam says that وَفُضِّلْنَا and we have been honored because number one أن النبي المختار محمد منا. That is, Prophet Muhammad is from us, right? وأن ومن الصديق. And from us is Siddiq, the truthful. This is Imam Ali alayhi salam. The true title of Siddiq does not belong to anyone but Imam Ali alayhi salam. World can give whomever they want to give the title of Siddiq. But the true title of Siddiq be, 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 belongs to Imam Ali al-Islam. وَمِنَّ tayyar And from us is Ja'far al-Tayyar. The position of Ja'far al-Tayyar is great. He sacrificed and became a martyr in battle of Mut'a. And after that... Prophet said to the people that Jafar has got a very high position. Allah Azza wa Jal has given him two wings. And he is with the angels in the heaven. This is Jafar Tayyar. وَمِنَّا أَسَدُ اللَّهِ وَأَسَدَ رَسُولِهِ And from us is the lion of Allah and the lion of the Prophet. And this is Hazrat Hamza. وَمِنَّا سَيِّدَةُ نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ And from us is the chief of all the women. وَمِنَّا سَيِّدَةِ شَبَابِ أَعْلِ الْجَنَّةِ الْحَسَنِ وَالْحُسَيْنِ And from us is the chief of the youths of paradise, Hassan and Hussein. اللهم صل على صل على محمد this clock is going very fast. Huh? Now, if you look at this as a matter of speaking about the fadilat of Ahlul Bayt, muslam, I have spoken. But analyze now and understand. I'm not going to analyze totally. I'm just going to give you one point over here. Analyze this. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin salam, would have talked about the event of Karbala would have told the people that we were not given water for three days. He would have told the people that we have not, uh, or we, our, our men were killed, and they were brutally killed, and this is how, what happened to my father, and how the horses were run over his body. Imam could have said all this story. But Imam knew. He has to keep the madhab of Ahlul Bayt salam, alive. He has to bring to the people the true teachings of Islam. And therefore, if they want to understand the true teachings of Islam, let the people of Damascus know we are the Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet. 
Because Muawiyah's policy had always been in order to keep the people away from telling them who are the Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet. Let the people of Damascus know. Let those people who are sitting there know that we are the family of the Holy Prophet. This was the bold step. There were many bold steps. We'll just take one, one example. Now we come to how Imam expressed in order to keep the event of Ashura alive. Point number one. During this time that Imam was alive, that is up to the time of his martyrdom, there is one thing which Imam continuously used to do and that was to weep. Sometimes you wonder, sometimes you wonder that there is a person, I'm not talking, I'm not giving saying that there is a person in Nairobi or like this, but you go to any majlises somewhere. And there is a person who is continuously crying. He listens to the Masaib and he is crying. A Marthia is recited, he is crying. There are people here from Mombasa and many of you also know Marhum Aqa Haidar, Rahmatullah Alayh, right? If you were to see him during the days of Muharram, you would be surprised. That this aged person, this person who had gone up to that great age, that long age, and he would be on during the 12 days of Muharram, during the Majalises, he would be crying continuously. I remember one eve of Ashura, when on the eve of Ashura, when we recite the Masaib of Hazrat Ali al Asghar, even after the Masaib was over and people were doing, beating the chests and listening to the Marthias and the Nohas, he was standing there and he was crying and he was crying. I was very young at that time and I was asking this question. Why is he crying? Well, we come to know later on. When true muhabbat of Hussein enters into the heart of a person, he cannot stop crying. Very quickly, let me tell you one incident here, very quickly. There was one person in Iran many years ago, he decided that he wanted to go to Mashhad to observe and to commemorate the day of Ashura, in Mashhad, from his village to Mashhad. So during those days, not buses or things, people were traveling on animals, and he was traveling. Unfortunately, he could not reach Mashhad. Eve of Ashura, he was in another village. So he said, let me attend to the Majlis. He attended the Majlis. He sat down, he was an alim, a scholar. Okay. The person who was to deliver the was he, sat down on the member, this alim sees that uh, the warden, the person who was looking after the masjid, the Imam Barga, he came and gave two bags to that man. He kept it there. And this person made the wise, and when it was time of Masaib, the lights put off, whatever type of lights they were, whether they were candles or lanterns, put off, and this person started reciting the Masaib and suddenly there was uh, stones being thrown on the heads of the people. This alim was sitting there, was surprised, amazed, and he, after Majlis, he realized what had happened and what had happened was that the person was sitting there doing wise, I don't have two bags of stones, don't worry, okay? He took those from the bag and he was throwing on the people. So this alim goes and talks to him and says, whatever you did was wrong. Why did you throw stones on the, onto people? And he said that uh, when I do Maasai, people don't cry. In order to make them cry, I throw stones on them. Listen to what this alim said. 
Alim told him, you don't need to do these types of things in order to make the people cry. The name of Hussein is such that if there is love of Hussein in the heart of a person, the name Hussein only is enough to bring tears into the eyes of the person. It is important for us to know that. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin had witnessed the event of Karbala. And continuously he was weeping. And by weeping, Imam Ali Zainul Abidin salam, wanted the people to realize that what is the truth. People would come to him and ask him, Mawla, how long would you cry? And Imam would tell them, why should not I cry? When he would see a person, a butcher, ready to slaughter an animal, the first thing he would go and ask him and tell him, uh, did you give water to this animal? And when that person would say, why not? When the instruction have come from you, that is from your family, that we should give water to the animals before we slaughter them. And Imam would then say, hi, my father. So this weeping was one way of keeping alive the event of Ashura. And it continues today. If truly, as you know, and you have had hadith, truly, if one tear that comes out with ma'rifah, that tear is enough to wash away and to remove all your sins, even if those sins are as many or as much as foam in the seas and the oceans. This was number one. Number two, Imam in the beginning had difficulty. Of course, he was not allowed to publicly have gatherings and these things. Slowly, slowly it came. One thing Imam encouraged his followers, go and perform the ziyara of the grave of my father. And people would go. When they would go there, they would see Karbala, they would see the grave of Imam Hussein al-Islam, they would recite the ziyara. Now they would understand. When we say, Ashhadu annaka qad aqamta salah wa aatayta zakah wa amarta bil ma'roof wa nahayta anil munkar, it is indirectly telling, Mawla, you used to do all this. And to keep these things alive, you sacrificed your life. We are ready. We are ready to follow. And number three, which Imam was, did was, that Imam started doing sajda, and he is the first person to do sajda on Khake Karbala. Do you remember when you are praying namaz? When you put that khake karbala, when you put that mohor as we call, that tablet, it could be from any earth. But when you put that and you put your forehead there on that mohor, think sometimes, the sajda that I am doing is alive because Hussein sacrificed his life. This is how Imam Hussein salam, kept the event of Karbala alive in order to reach to his mission, to his objective. Recite salawat, please. <laughs> the other thing which Imam did, the other tactic which he did was enjoining good and forbidding evil. This is not something very difficult. Let me tell you. We normally do that. I give you a very simple example of what is Amr bil Maruf, what is Nahi Anil Munkar. It's not a big speech 
that I give and say do this and do that and this. For example, practical example. If a person is reciting Surat Yasin, or if a person is reciting verses from the Holy Quran, or a dua, or ziyara, or salam, as we say, and if he makes a mistake in its recitation, if I go and talk to that person and tell him, this is the mistake that you have made, this is Amr al Ma'ruf. Or if a person is doing something wrong, and I go and tell him, alone and tell him this is wrong, don't do that, this, this is the end This system has to remain alive. If the community has to remain alive, this system has to remain alive. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin salawatullahu salamuhu alayhi. Imam says, anyone who refrains from enjoining the good and forbidding evil is like a man who disregards the book of God. If I don't do Amr bil Maruf, if I don't do Nahi Anil Munkar, it is like as if I am rejecting Quran. Imam, of course, adds a, a clause over there and says, unless he lives in the condition of Taqiyya, in the condition where a person is to protect his life and he cannot openly do Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi Anil Munkar because he knows by doing so he will disclose himself to be a follower of Ahlul Bayt. Imam says in that circumstances he doesn't have to do. But one point over here which is a very beautiful point Imam Hassan al-Askari salawatullah wa salamuhu Our 11th Imam says that if you point out a mistake of a person in front of everyone, Imam Hassan Askari says, it, you have humiliated him. He had done wrong. It was total wrong. He, it needed to be corrected. But if you do so in front of everyone, Imam says you have humiliated him. But if you take him on one side and talk to him, you have honored him. This is how important the institution of Amr bil Maruf and Nahi Anil Munkar is. And I believe that in present time when we are in living in ghaybat kubra when our imam we cannot see our imam our imam is aware of every act of ours it is important that within ourselves with good heart and with that love for a mu'min we should try and do amr bil ma'ruf as much as we can and even refrain the people from doing or involving themselves into evil acts, into acts that may destroy them and take them away from religion. Try and do that, but with love, love of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in the heart. Recite salawat, please. <coughs> Tomorrow is Thursday, I know, and, but we have the last part tomorrow. And inshallah, I will try to explain two more points tomorrow. And then, uh, it doesn't mean that I have completed everything which Imam did, but as I've said, I allocated four lectures for this, and I will, inshallah, try and complete. But I want to answer one question before I come towards Masaib. And this question is, if you remember, on Monday I mentioned about the event of Hira or Harra. And in that event I said that when Muslim bin Uqba came to Medina, he did not harm Imam Ali Zainul Abidin al Islam at all. And I told you that I will explain the reason why and I want to answer that question. Come towards Masaib. The question 
the reason why it is is when on uh, in the month of Rajab 60 AH when the letter had come from Damascus to the governor of Medina the governor of uh, the uh, demand in that letter was to take bayat uh, separately from three or four people one of them, of course, was Imam Hussein al-Islam. The second one was Abdullah bin Zubair. I'm just giving you background, so I will come to the point. Second one was Abdullah bin Zubair. And when the messenger of the governor of Medina had come to give this information to Imam Hussein al-Islam, Imam Hussein al-Islam was in Masjid Nabawi and sitting next to him was Abdullah bin Zubair. So at that time Abdullah bin Zubair was also told that you are being called. And Abdullah bin Zubair said, do you know the reason why an Imam had told him that it seems that Muawiyah has passed away and Yazid is demanding for our bay'at. Okay. So Abdullah bin Zubair did not speak anything. But uh, he immediately made plans and he left Medina to go to Mecca through the routes which were not common. The roads which were not uh, common. Whilst Imam Hussain al-Islam, when he traveled from Mecca to Medina, he used the main road. He was not afraid. He used the main road. Now Abdullah bin Zubair is in Mecca. Imam Hussain al-Islam arrives in Mecca. Abdullah bin Zubair comes to meet Imam. He advises Imam, do not fight against Yazid. Do not oppose Yazid. I would advise you that you should go and hide in a very far away place. In reply, Imam had told him, O oh Abdullah, wherever I go, even if I go into the burrow of a snake, they will pull me out from there. And then Imam had told him, My father has told him that a person will be slaughtered like a sheep in the haram of Makkah. And I do not want to be that sheep. Indirectly, Imam was telling him, Abdullah, I know what are your intentions. Abdullah wanted to be the ruler. Abdullah wanted to be the Khalifa. He refused to do bay'at of Yazid. He opposed Yazid. He stayed in Mecca. And the reason he stayed inside Mecca was that Mecca was considered to be a place of safety. So that he could not be attacked. After the event of Karbala, Abdullah bin Zubair started his movement and he started taking the oath of allegiance from people. There were few people who supported him. And those people in Medina, Abdullah bin Hanzala and the others, had also given their bay'at to Abdullah bin Zubair. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin had not given. Imam Ali Zainul Abidin had spoken against Abdullah bin Zubair. And the reason why Imam had spoken against Abdullah bin Zubair was that Abdullah had removed the salawat from the Friday khutbah when it was being delivered. He removed salawat on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. So when Muslim bin Uqba came and when he had surrounded and he took all the information, he knew that Imam Ali Zainul Abidin had not supported in this movement. Therefore he did not even go to demand anything from Imam Ali Zainul Abidin. He did not touch Imam Ali Zainul Abidin. Not taking much time, there in this event is one akhlaq of Imam Ali Zainul Abidin. Marwan bin Hakam was in Medina. 
And problems came upon Banu Umayyah, Marwan bin Hakam went to Abdullah bin Umar and said, look, times are difficult, I cannot take my whole family out. If I go and take my family out from Medina, these people will know. So I request you, please, look after them so that I can leave secretly from Medina. Abdullah bin Umar slammed the door, meaning, sorry, I cannot. He may have gone to other people. Finally, he went to the door of Imam Ali Zainul Abidin. And Imam Ali Zainul Abidin said, I will look after your family in the same way as I will look after my family. Mawla, this person is your enemy. Why? Why are you ready to look after that? It would not be surprising if Imam Ali Zainul Abidin were to reply to me. They may be the family of my enemy, but finally they are human beings. I will look after them. That Imam who said that even if the killer of my father would keep his sword as a trust, I will return that sword. Humanity that Imam Ali Zainul Abidin taught. My elders, brothers and sisters, when we think about the life of Imam Ali Zainul Abidin, how we treat each other, how we deal with each other. Let's take that great lesson from Imam Ali Zainul Abidin. Treat people in the manner that they are human beings. Azadaran Imam Hussein al Islam. Ye Imam Kolog kehte hain ke ye bimare karbalat hai. Ha Azadaro isme koi shak nahi hai ke Ashur ke waqe se. कुछ दिन पहले और कुछ दिन बाद इमाम अली ज़ेनुल आबिदीन ज़रूर बीमार थे। तारीख में मैंने पढ़ा और जब मैंने पढ़ा तो मेरा दिल हिल गया कि इमाम अली ज़ेनुल आबिदीन को जब करबला में करबला से ऊंट पे बिठाया था इमाम को तो वो लिखते हैं कि आप जानते हो कि क्यों इमाम को हथकड़ियाँ और पैरों में बेड़ियाँ وہ لکھتے ہیں کیونکہ امام اتنے بیمار تھے اتنے بیمار تھے کہ اونٹ پر نہیں سوار بیٹھ نہیں سکتے تھے امام کو بٹھانے کے لئے امام کے پیروں میں بیڑیاں ماندی گئی تھے آزاداروں و آشور کا واقعہ امام غش کی حالت میں تھے اور تاریخ کہتی ہے کہ تین مرتبہ امام کو غش سے اٹھایا گیا تھا پہلی مرتبہ وہ تب تھا کہ جب امام حسین علیہ السلام آخری رخصت کے لیے آئے تھے ازادارو امام علی زین العابدین نے جب اپنے بابا کی طرف دیکھا تھا تو اپنے بابا کو نہ پہچان سکے امام حسین علیہ السلام کی حالت ایسی تھی کیونکہ صبح سے امام لاشیں اٹھاتے تھے اور آتے تھے جب امام نے دیکھا اس وقت امام حسین نے کہا تھا بیٹا علی زین العابدین میں خدا حافظ کرنے آیا ہوں میں ودا کرنے آیا ہوں ازادار و امام نے کچھ سوال کیے تھے امام نے جواب میں یہی فرمایا تھا بیٹا علی زین العابدین سمجھ لو کہ تیرے اور میرے سوا مردوں میں کوئی باقی نہیں ہے تو ایک مرتبہ امام علی زین العابدین نے کہا ففی ام ذرا میری تلوار دو اور میرا عصا دو امام نے پوچھا بیٹا کہا جا رہے ہو کہا بابا اگر کوئی مدد کے لیے باقی نہیں ہے تو میں جاؤں گا ان دشمنوں کے سامنے لڑنے کے لیے امام حسین نے فرمایا بیٹا تیرا جہاد کربلا کی سرزمین پر نہیں ہے بیٹا تیرا جہاد اب تو کربلا سے 
کوفہ اور کوفہ سے شام شام اور کوفہ کے بازاروں اور درباروں میں ہے بیٹا ان بچوں کا خیال رکھنا بیٹا ان عورتوں کا خیال رکھنا بس ازاداروں یہ پہلی مرتبہ تھا دوسری مرتبہ جب امام کو اٹھایا گیا وہ وقت تھا کہ جب ندا گونجی علا قتل الحسین و بکر بلا علا زبع الحسین و بکر بلا زینب نے جا کے اٹھایا اے بیٹا یہ کیا سن رہی ہوں امام نے کہا فوفی اما ذرا خیمے کا پردہ ہٹائیے اب جو خیمے کا پردہ ہٹایا کیا دیکھا بابا کا سر نوکے نیزا پر ہے کہا السلام علیک یا ابا عبداللہ اور ازاداروں تیسری مرتبہ جب خیمے میں آگ لگائی گئی بی بی آئے خیمے سے دوسرے خیمے کی طرف جا رہی تھی جناب زینب نے دیکھا اب جو آگ لگ رہی ہے اٹھایا بیٹا علی تم امام وقت ہو خیمے میں آگ لگ رہی ہے اب ہم کیا کرے خیمے میں باقی رہے یا باہر نکلے ہماری چادریں لوٹھی گئی ہے فوفی اما جان بچانا واجب ہے اب جاؤ آپ باہر اب بی بیا نکلی وا محمدہ وا علیہ وا حسینہ کی آواز وَسَيَعْلَمُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُ اَيَّمٌ قَلَبِيًّا قَلِبُونَ اِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ مَا تَمِعْ حُسَيْنَ